From MTN News, you're watching Montana This Morning. I'm Gabby Crevett, and coming up, we'll have the latest details on the Bridger Foothills fire. And rain and some snow helps our John Amy find uh, with the latest on the State Creek fire near Whitehall. Well, good morning once again. It is Tuesday, uh, just ahead of 6.30. Chet Lehman, Matt Elwell with you here. Uh, we had some snow showers earlier. Still pretty chilly outside. It is the, cool. Uh, the eighth day of September. I'm going to see the temperature 33 here yeah. at the studio. Brisk. Uh, it is brisk. <laughs> and uh, unfortunately, we're still dealing with some frosty conditions, mm -hmm. uh, possible damage to a few gardens oh, around sure. the area if you haven't covered it up. You know, yeah, too late now. Too yeah. late, yeah. <laughs> uh, you may have to cover it again tomorrow or for tomorrow morning. Temperatures into the 30s for most of us, 27 in West Yellowstone. We have had a little bit of light snow, nothing uh, significant for the most part. Heavier snow as you get toward uh, the Gallatin Canyon and into the foothills of parts of southwest Montana. This isn't going to last long. There may be some patchy fog in a few low-lying areas. You can see our skies are clearing. That's going to mean temperatures are going up instead of down like they did yesterday. Our temperatures near the 50 degree mark with all that brilliant sunshine that we're going to see in Butte. It looks like it's going to be a beautiful day as well. We'll talk more about your forecast, of course, coming up uh, from the Billion Auto Weather patio in just a few minutes. All right, find your coat when you head out there. Oh, I got it. 6.30, <laughs> our top story this time. I'm sure you do. Uh, some people are going home after the Bridger Foothills fire evacuations for the last couple of days. Gallatin County Sheriff's Office, along with the Forest Service Management Team, lifting evacuation orders now for some areas. Kelly Canyon and Moffat Gulch residents will be able to return home unless they were notified otherwise. People between the uh, two intersections of Jackson Creek and Laughing Horse Lane may also go home again unless they had been told otherwise. Bridger Canyon Road stays close from Jackson Creek uh, to the Brackett Creek Road. So far that fire has burned more than 7,100 acres. 160 people are working to help keep put it out. MTN's Gabby Krevett went on a tour with the Forest Service to see the damage in Bridger Canyon area over the past few days. Cooler temperatures, rain and even snow are making the job a little easier for firefighters fighting the Bridger Foothills fire, but agencies are saying the work is far from over. This is really just a reprieve for us. Um, we're looking at this this one cold day and by the end of the week, 70s and 80s. The scene in the Bridger Mountains has certainly transformed over the course of the weekend, bringing some relief to firefighters and the community on Labor Day. We've had a couple very busy days. Um, Friday and Saturday were extremely busy. Sunday, we had less fire activity and today is really a great day to get a lot of progress and work done on direct fire line. On Monday morning, evacuated Bridger Canyon residents were allowed to temporarily return to check on the condition of their homes and grab belongings. On late Sunday afternoon, Sheriff Gutkin with the Gallatin County Sheriff's Office reported dozens of homes were damaged at some capacity by the fire. This is a very complex incident with a lot of homes, lives, um, property, livestock, um, numerous values at risk. Today, the U.S. Forest Service reports given the complexity of the fire, fire response has bumped up from local and regional efforts to type one, which means there are firefighters from neighboring states helping fight this complex fire. I believe most of those team members are out of Colorado and Wyoming and they will continue to work with uh, all the local forests, Gallatin County Sheriff's Office, um, all the Gallatin County Emergency Management, all the local cooperators. You can learn about all the different ways to help residents, firefighters, and the community by visiting our website. Reporting in Bozeman, Gabby Krevett, MTN News. Now, by the way, the cause of that fire still remains unknown. Now, we want to share a video for you, uh, with you, uh, that uh, Dr. Rob Maher of Montana State University sent us. Uh, this is kind of cool. This shows the perimeter of the Bridger Foothills fire, gives you some trails and peaks around it, kind of gives you the layout. Use the National Interagency Fire Center and Google Earth to make it. Much of the area is familiar if you look at it. It gives you a perspective of the thousands of acres burned, listed at 7,100. Remember that fire started Friday afternoon, went up the mountain over the ridge into Bridger Canyon proper. So. Interesting work there, and thanks to Dr. Maher for uh, providing that to us. Multiple agencies are getting an overflow of supplies and are asking the community to consider making monetary donations now. Bridger Foothills Fire Relief Fund has been set up through local organizations in the community to help out with that. Fund will be used to meet specific needs, cover supply donations for first responders and evacuees. Now, there are multiple ways you can contribute. Details all available on our website.
by texting Bridgers, B-R-I-D-G-E-R-S, to 91999 on their cell phone. Uh, and they can also give online to the Bridger Foothills Fire Relief Fund through the Greater Galaxy United Way website and the One Valley Community Foundation website. Now, both agencies are also accepting checks. For more details on what exactly the fund is going towards, check out our websites. Now, those who lost homes are not able to return home are getting some help. As long as the needs there, Red Cross Evacuation Center at Christ the King Lutheran Church in Bozeman will be available. Regional Communications Director of the Montana Red Cross, Matt Oxner, says the agency working with emergency management here in Gallatin County. Red Cross not housing people at the church. Instead, people are being put up in hotels. 13 were sheltered that way Sunday evening, five the night before. 20 people have also come through the evacuation center for, on Sunday for information, to have someone to talk to, grab some water and some snacks. You can contribute through MontanaRedCross.org. If you have questions or need help or services, want to donate or volunteer, you can also call 800-272-6668. About 90% of Red Cross of Montana is made up of volunteers. In other fire news this morning, the State, uh, the State Creek Fire uh, burning about 60 miles north of Whitehall, burning in some very rugged terrain and is growing. As John Amy learned uh, that a dose of cold, wet weather helping firefighters settle it down. Well, the weather's turned cold and blustery here at the State Creek Fire with a lot of wind and officials fighting that fire say it's getting snowed on at the moment. The fire was first reported August 25th due to a lightning strike. It has since grown to over 2,300 acres. The fire is burning in really rough terrain with many snags. Now that's trees that have burned out that run the risk of falling. A very dangerous thing for firefighters. So firefighters are building fuel breaks around the fire, but are basically hoping for the weather to take care of it. Reporting north of Whitehall, John Amy, MTN News. 636 now in the eastern and central part of Montana, a lot of acreage blackened due to three fires. In Muscle Shell County, people in the Roundup area were allowed to return to assess their property. Over the last six days, the Bobcat fire southeast of that town damaged several structures, burned more than 29,000 acres. Now in Bighorn County, progress on the Sarpy fire, which is now 70% contained. Fire has burned more than 52,000 acres between the Crow and Northern Cheyenne reservations. And firefighters say they now have full containment around the 58 mile perimeter of the Huff fire. That blaze burning near Jordan, 60% contained. No homes have been lost. That fire has burned nearly 47,000 acres. And in the park, Lone Star Fire in Yellowstone, now 3,346 acres. It's burning in rugged terrain about three miles south of Old Faithful. Started by a lightning strike back on August 22nd. This past Saturday, smoke from the fire forced the closure of the road between Old Faithful and West Thumb. It is open again, but firefighters monitoring the blaze say it could close at any time once again. Uh, also, here's uh, something to take in this morning. We have permission from the homeowners to share this photo. Bill and Sally Feniger face uh, this when they returned home. It's hard to take it in. Destruction of their house and Bridger Foothills fire. We expect to see more loss and heartache in the coming days. We'll be sharing stories and pictures as people wish and allow us to do so while respecting the crushing loss many have suffered in this fire. There is something to be thankful for, uh, no deaths due to this fire. So that is a really good news there. Amazing video. Yes. And photos coming and out of there. And it's heart-wrenching to see that. And more to come in the days to come as well. 638, we are going to take a quick break here on Montana this morning. Uh, come back, go ahead and minute back uh, when everyone was staying at home, roads were a lot less crowded. You did put the pedal to the metal. Maybe just a little. Coming up, find out how behavior like that still affecting highway travel now that more people are back on those roads. We'll have that, but first let's check in with Gail King to see what's coming up at 7 o'clock. Good morning to you ahead on CBS this morning, the latest on the race for a COVID vaccine. Health experts are very worried that political rhetoric around it could affect people's willingness to take it, even when Americans need it most. Also with protests around the country demanding police reform, We'll take a look at the changing relationship between schools and law enforcement, how one district wants to get student offenders help instead of seeing them arrested. 
That's a good idea. And author Brene Brown, there she is, is releasing a special edition of her best-selling book, The Gift of Imperfection. Hear her new perspective on how people can live what she calls a wholehearted life during these very challenging times. We'll see you at 7 o'clock on The Dot.